The Miyu Mini was one of them handhelds that just oozed charm. It played most of our favorite classic systems, and it was never shy for a nice photo shoot. Say cheese! Well, today, we're gonna look at the new variant. Can this one impress, or is it just another fish in the sea? Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribble. So this is what came. A package ripped, ripped, ripped with bubble wrap. Uh, it's wrapped well. I just came. I'm John Lou. And here's the box. Plus. Not one of these again. Over here we have the specs. Claims around seven to eight hours of battery life. Three and a half inch IPS screen. And a few more doofers, including Wi-Fi support. This one's a 32 gigabyte model. And to be fair, this box is rather bare. So given a manual and a quick start guide, it explains how to add games, navigate the menu and save state. We're also given the handheld, obviously, a short USB-C charging cable, a microSD USB adapter, built to use this with the microSD card to add or remove games, a screen protector and wipes. Nice. So we got the one in translucent black. There are a variety of colors to choose from, but with the Mia Mini, we thought the black or the white one were the nicest. Moving around to the bottom, we have the headphone socket, one micro SD card slot, and then the USB port for charging. On the side, we have a lot of nothing. And over here, we have the power button and three small LEDs to show if it's charging or full or whatever. On the left side, we have the volume rocker. On the rear, we have four shoulder buttons and the two in the center are slightly raised. There's easy access to the battery compartment, so if you want to switch it out, we can do it easily. On the front, we have a nice 4.3 display, perfect for classic titles. One D-pad, a menu button, start and select, and Super Nintendo inspired face buttons. Similar to a Game Boy, there's only one mono speaker in the bottom right. It's time to look at the controls. The D-pad is light, yet responsive. We can easily perform Hadoukens, but it's a little small. With these light face buttons, we can tap pretty quickly. The shoulder buttons are very easy to reach, similar to the ones on the Ambanic 353VS. The controls are nicely spaced out, and the combination of the light buttons work well, leaving those with quite a comfortable handheld. It's about time for the size comparison. The Mi Mini Plus is slightly larger than the Mi Mini. The screen itself is almost double the size. If we put it next to the RG35XX, it's very comparable in size. It's like the bottom bit's chopped off, and the D-pad is slightly smaller. It's much larger than the Game Gear Micro, and a hair bit smaller than the Retro Pocket 3 Plus. Tea time. The Mi Mini Plus is just over double the size of a Roybosh tea bag. Let's have a quick look at the specs. The Plus shares most of the same internals as the original Mi Mini. Noticeable differences are the much larger 3.5 inch display, larger battery, and Wi Fi. Let's see how long it takes to turn on. It's me, John Luke. Joke time. How do you follow Will Smith in the snow? You follow the Fresh Prince. What do you call a factory that makes okay products? Free air? At around 15 seconds, that's not bad at all. Especially knowing we can put this thing to sleep. So this is the menu, and it's pretty much the same as the Miu Mini. We have a favorite list, and over here are the games separated by system. There's a nice variation of 8 to 32-bit systems, and selecting any of these will go into its own games list. Let's have a quick look at one. Here's PlayStation, and here are the games. We can just select one, and off we go. In the RetroArch menu, we have other systems that can be emulated by this handheld. On this 32GB variant, some may be empty, but you can add your own games to the microSD using a PC. The app menu has a file browser, open source games, a direct shortcut to RetroArch, and open Streets of Rage, which plays brilliantly. In the settings menu, we can change brightness, enable Wi-Fi, which I think is mainly for net play. We'll check it out once we get a second plus. We can adjust colors, change language, adjust keys, and change our theme. There's many to choose from. Let's get into some gameplay. We're going to start off with handhelds, and first up is the Game Boy. It runs rather well, until... Yeah. So the Game Boy emulator included is the same one on the Miu Mini, which gives us this high-pitched whine for some of my favorite games. Let's move on. 
Here's Game Boy Advance, and it runs rather well. This game follows the time I infiltrated the bored mothership. I bored Dole Knight. The Neo Geo Pocket. Wonder Swan Colour. Now for the consoles. Atari 2600. This looks terrible. I am going to the shop to buy some crisps. Atari 7800. PC Engine. Sega Master System. Sega Mega Drive. NES. Now if you haven't noticed, we have a bezel for this. We can turn that off by pressing the menu button, and then going down to the native menu. Now in this quick menu, we need to go to on-screen overlay, and then disable display overlay. Now we go to resume, and we have nice clean graphics. Here's Super Nintendo. and PlayStation 1. We also have some arcade games. Here's GigaWing. And Street Fighter 3, Third Strike. With the original Mio Mini, one of my favourite things about it was only an OS. With this custom firmware, we could instantly switch games at the push of a button. Not to forget the hundreds of improvements, including fixes and many additional systems. We're happy to see that this firmware is also available on the Mio Mini Plus. Check out the GitHub and follow instructions. Make sure we're updated to this firmware, then off we go. Installation is pretty straightforward, but we recommend using a fresh microSD. Once it's on, we select the systems we want to use, and there is a lot to choose from. Remember this handheld is only 1.2 GHz, so don't expect anything like a PlayStation Portable, Dreamcast, or N64. Once the systems are set up, we can add BIOS, ROMs, and then play. Now that the high pitch wine is gone, all Game Boy games are perfect. We can finally appreciate our Italian supercar. Or perhaps you prefer some Amiga, is IK+. Plus. Overdrive. Robocod. Unfortunately, this system cannot handle AGA games. Not really an issue if you have the original version working fine, but for Jim Power, we need something a lot more powerful. If you thought the RG35XX is better, not in the case of Amiga. The Mi Mini Plus can play most of the A500 library, but if you want to play all the games without issue, you need at least an Ambenic 353 system or Retro Pocket 3. If you really did want to play Jim Power, how about the one on the Atari ST? It runs full speed, and it's got many bleeps. As this is the same spec as the Mi Mini, we can also play some DOS games too. It's about time for the pros and the cons. The Mi Mini Plus is essentially a larger version of their previous handheld, 
There's a nice bright screen, ready to play as soon as it arrives, and you can add more functionality by using Onion OS. Unfortunately, there are some issues with the stock firmware, and it comes with an unreliable microSD. As the alternatives, there's only really the 35XX at a similar price point. The handheld is slightly larger, the controls are a bit more rigid, and I find the stock firmware is a bit more jank. As for the Mi Mini Plus, the display is just as good as the Ambonic, but the controls feel light and more responsive. You'll be able to play most of the same stuff, plus Amiga, but if you have larger hands, or you want to play it on the TV, the Ambonic is the better choice. As for the comparison with the regular Mi Mini, we've got better shoulder buttons, Wi-Fi, and the display is much less saturated. But the original's charm and size is what made us fall in love with it, and made it perfect for toilet breaks at work. Do we recommend the Mi Mini Plus? Well, if you're looking for an affordable handheld that can play up to PlayStation 1, then yeah. But if you expect anything more, you'll need to pay a bit extra for the N64 or PSP fix. Outside that, it's a pretty solid system indeed. As I play some more games on the Amiga, here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. You guys are fantastic and we cannot thank you enough. If you want to help support our work, please jump on or join us in our Discord. I will be on later eating Pop-Tarts and watching X-rated movies. Anyway, this has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! Please check out some of our other videos and give us a sub. Or visit me for a massage.